7.1 Introduction to Solutions. This lesson is for um, for Wednesday, January 21st. For this lesson, please refer to Table E for the names and charges of polyatomic ions, Table S for the names of elements, the periodic table for the oxidation states of elements, and Tables K and L for the names of acids and bases. Let's first talk about uh, how to describe mixture. As you should know from Unit 1, mixtures contain two or more substances combined physically in varying meaning changing or not fixed proportions by mass. Alright, so what this means is the amount of, um, of substances in terms of mass can change. Alright, so the composition of mixtures varies or changes, meaning that, the, um, meaning that the amount can change, but the mixture will still be the same. So for example, uh, the amount of sugar can change in sugar water, but it's still sugar water regardless of the amount of sugar and water. All right, so if it's 5 grams of sugar and 100 grams of water, or 10 grams of sugar and 100 grams of water, it's still sugar water. All right, uh, next, because mixtures are formed by physically combining substances, they can also be decomposed or broken down physically as well. Finally, each substance retains its own properties, meaning that the properties stay the same. So for example, sugar water is both sweet and wet, so sugar stays sweet and water remains wet. All right, so the properties are kept the same. It just means that they're combined physically. The, the fact that they're combined physically doesn't change what their properties are. All right, so just to summarize mixtures, there are two or more substances combined physically in varying or changing proportions by mass. All right, um, the amount of something can change, but it's still the same kind of mixture. All right, changing the amount doesn't change what it actually is. Um, they can be broken down physically because they're combined physically in the first place, and the substances in the mixture keep their properties, meaning that the properties stay the same. For example, sugar is both sweet and wet, so sugar stays sweet and water stays wet. Now I'll talk about what solutions are. Aqueous solutions are a specific type of mixture, specifically a homogeneous mixture where all the particles are distributed or spread out evenly. All right, so just remember that an aqueous solution means the same thing as a homogeneous mixture, and a homogeneous mixture is a mixture where all the particles are distributed or spread out evenly. As a result of um, the particles being spread out or distributed evenly, the solution has a uniform composition position, meaning that it looks like one phase or one substance. If you've ever seen salt water or alcohol, uh, uh, an alcohol water mixture, it looks like one thing because it just has kind of like one color to it. All right, so that's what it means. It is uniform composition because all the particles are spread out or distributed evenly in a homogeneous mixture, or in other words, an aqueous solution. All right, and uh, aqueous solutions are represented by um, X, AQ for the symbols representing the fact that you have an aqueous solution or a mixture that exists in water. All right, so X, AQ means that a substance is mixed with water. So whatever X is, it mixes with AQ or in other words, water. All right, so examples of solutions include NaCl, AQ, which means an aqueous solution of sodium chloride. So in other words, that means that sodium chloride is uh, dissolved in or in other words, mixes with water. All right. Uh, and another example is HClAQ, which means um, an aqueous solution of hydrogen chloride. In other words, that means that hydrogen chloride is dissolved in, or in other words, mixes with water. All right. Now let's talk about the parts of solutions. Solutions have two parts, a solute and a solvent. All right, so solutions by definition mean that a solute is dissolved in a solvent. And let's break that down further. All right. A solute is a substance that is dissolved, like sugar. And a solvent is a substance that dissolves another uh, thing, like water. So now let's just see an example here. Let's say that this is Kool-Aid mix, right? What we can say here is since we're forming a uh, Kool-Aid mixture, the solute is the red powder you throw into the water to make Kool-Aid mixture. And the solvent is the water. That's because the Kool-Aid powder is what is dissolved, and the water is the substance that actually does the dissolving. All right, so the solute, the Kool-Aid powder, is dissolved. The water is the solvent, which is the thing that dissolves the Kool-Aid powder. So if you combine the Kool-Aid pow powder, the solute, plus the solvent, you get a Kool-Aid solution. So think of solute as a thing that goes in and is dissolved, such as powder, and think of solvent as the substance that actually does the dissolving. 
such as like water. Usually the solvent will be water and the solute will be like something powdery or something that actually dissolves in the water solvent. All right, so that's how you can remember it. Solute is what goes in and is dissolved. Solvent is that um, thing that it goes into and that actually does dis dissolving itself. Now let's talk about some examples of solutions. One example of a solution is sugar water, where sugar is the solute and water is the solvent. That's because sugar goes in and is dissolved while water is um, the substance that does the dissolving. All right? So in other words, this means that sugar, the solute, is dissolved in water, the solvent. All right? Another example is salt water, uh, where salt, at, or NaCl is the solute, and water, uh, H2O, is the solvent. All right? So the solution is represented by um, NaClAq, all right, which is shown down here. Um, note here that once the mixture forms, the solution looks like one phase only. It looks like a liquid. This means that salt is dissolved in the water. And this is a homogeneous mixture because all the particles are distributed evenly, or in other words, spread out evenly. All right, so the solute here is NaCl because it's what is dissolved, and sol the solvent here is H2O because it's the substance that actually does the dissolving. If you put those two together, you get NaCl AQ. Remember, this is the notation for an aqueous solution or for a homogeneous mixture. And that's formed by combining two substances physically, NaCl and water, which is the AQ part. All right, uh, now another example um, is soda where carbon dioxide, artificial sweetener, and caffeine are all the s solutes, which are the things dissolved in water. All right? Um, while uh, water is the solvent, because solvent is the thing that actually does the dissolving. All right, Kool-Aid, as we already talked about in the previous slide, we have red Kool-Aid powder going in as a solute because it's the thing that is dissolved, while water is the substance that does, does the dissolving itself, so therefore the water is the solvent in that case. All right, so water is usually what will do the dissolving in many cases with solutions, whereas what goes into the water or what goes into the solvent will be considered the solute. Now we've learned about solutions, but how do we know if a solution will form? Well, in order for a solution to form, the solute and the solvent must have the same molecular polarities so that the particles attract um, and mix together, in other words, that, so that they dissolve in one another. This is because similar molecular polarities allow them to attract and mix with each other. All right, so polar solvents like water um, dissolve polar solutes like ethanol, all right? And uh, polar solvents like water will also dissolve ionic solutes like NaCl. All right, nonpolar solvents like benzene dissolve nonpolar solutes like fat. All right, so they have to either both be polar or they both have to be nonpolar in order for them to dissolve in each other. If it's polar, the if the solvent is polar, the solute has to be polar. If it's nonpolar for the solvent the solute has to be nonpolar. You get the basic idea. They both have to be polar or they both have to be nonpolar. That's the general idea here. Okay? So there you go. Um, and note here, by the way, that water, which is polar, cannot dissolve oil because it's nonpolar. Oil is nonpolar and water is polar, so obviously they won't mix, and as a result, oil will not dissolve in water because they don't have the same polarities. On the other hand, things like salt, which is ionic, and sugar, which is polar, will dissolve in water which is polar. That's because polar and polar are alike and ionic and polar are alike. So ionic and polar substances will dissolve in water because water is polar. Whereas nonpolar substances like oil will not dissolve in water because they're not the same polarity. Now let's talk about something very specific, ions and solutes. So um, ions and solutes can be explained as follows. If the solute itself is ionic, it always has to have two ions, obviously, as you know. The first ion will always have a positive charge, and the second ion will always have a negative charge. How you find the charges of ions is use table E to find the charges of polyatomic ions, and you use the periodic table. More specifically, you use the, char the charges of elements ions are the top oxidation states in the element box. All right, so let's see some examples of ions and solutes. If you have NH4S, we can look up the charges as follows. Uh, NH4 has a charge of plus one according to table E. NH4 plus is ammonium. It's listed on table E as ammonium. So therefore, we know NH4 is a polyatomic ion with a charge of plus one from table E. 
S, when it forms an ion, is a charge of negative 2. How we know that is we find the um, top oxidation state of S on the periodic table, and its top oxidation state is negative 2. Therefore, the charge of S is ion will be negative 2. So it's NH4 plus for the first ion and S2 minus for the second ion. All right? Um, sorry, there's actually a mistake here. I apologize for this. Um, it should actually be um, NH42S. I apologize for that. All right? Uh, now, we have, now we have phosphoric acid. So um, how you can find phosphoric acid is since it says acid, look it up on table K. Table K lists the acid chemical formulas. So you have H3PO4AQ, um, which is known as phosphoric acid. It's already listed on table K for you. So in order to um, split the ions up into two, we need to do the following. We look up H's... Um, top oxidation state, which is plus one. I know H is not a metal, but for now, just treat it as if it is, because it, it is combined with um, a polyatomic ion. So H's charge is plus one, if you look up the top oxygen state of H on the periodic table. And the uh, charge of PO4 is three minus, according to table E. PO4 three minus is listed as the phosphate in table E. So PO4 is a polyatomic ion. You can look up in table E, and according to table E, it has a charge of negative 3. All right, nitrous acid. Again, we split it up into, uh, we look up nitrous acid on table K. It just says HNO2AQ for nitrous acid. All right, now we have to split this up into two ions. So we have H plus, because H's top oxidation state on the periodic table is plus 1, and NO2 is listed on table E as a polyatomic ion. More specifically, NO2 is listed as NO2 minus or nitro on table E. So we know NO2's charge has to be negative 1 because it's listed as NO2 minus or nitride on table E. All right? So just use the polyatomic ions on table E to identify their charges. Also use the top oxidation states on the periodic table um, to find out the charge of elements when they form ions. This is how you do it. Now let's go over some same problems using what we know. So number one says um, that we have an aqueous solution nickel three oxide. So how would the solution be classified in terms of matter? So the solution we classify as a homogeneous mixture, and that's because we have an aqueous solution. As we know, aqueous solutions by definition are homogeneous mixtures. B says write the chemical form for nickel three oxide in aqueous solution. It's written as NO, Ni2O3Aq. The reason for this is as follows: nickel three has a ch has a charge of plus three since the the Roman numeral is 3. All right, so we have Ni for the symbol and 3 plus for the charge of the ion because of the Roman numeral here. The charge of oxide is O2 minus because the top oxidation state of O is 2 minus according to the periodic table. So you have Ni3 plus and O2 minus. What you do is crisscross the numbers only and you get Ni2O3. The reason why you add on the AQ is because that represents the fact that it is an aqueous solution or a homogeneous mixture. So if Ni2O3 were just by itself, that would only be a compound. But now that you're adding on an AQ, that represents that now you have a homogeneous mixture of Ni2O3. All right? So make sure you always tag on the AQ if you want to indicate that it's a mixture. Uh, number two, explain why methane and H2O don't form a solution, but HCl and H2O do. The reason why is because methane is nonpolar and symmetrical, while HCl is polar and asymmetrical. So since H2O is polar and asymmetrical, only HCl would dissolve in it. That's because like dissolves like. Since water is polar, only polar things would dissolve in it. The only thing that's polar here is HCl. So only HCl will dissolve in the water. Since methane or CH4 is nonpolar, it will not dissolve in water. That's because nonpolar substances do not dissolve in polar substances. All right, for number three, um, you can just use tables E and crisscross backwards and such, but NH4OH, if you look up on table E, is NH4 plus and OH minus. CuCl2 crisscross backwards, you get Cu2 plus and Cl minus. For Al2O3 crisscross backwards again, you get Al3 plus and O2 minus, and you can verify that with the top oxygen states on the periodic table. Uh, you have no subscripts, so look up the top oxygen states on the periodic table. Cas is 2 plus and O's is 2 minus. So you have Ca2 plus O2 minus. All right, and number four, um, Na2CO3AQ is the mixture because the AQ suggests that the substance is dissolved in water to form a mixture. Sugar water is a mixture because the proportions of its components varies. So that means that um, the amounts of sugar and water are not fixed. They can change, but it will still be sugar water, no matter how much of each you have. Um, number six, iron is 
magnetic, but salt is not. So if they form a mixture, iron and salt will, will keep their properties because substances, properties, and mixtures don't change. And this final one is homogeneous because all the particles are distributed evenly. That's the definition of a homogeneous mixture. Please complete these homework questions on your own for the next lesson. Thank you very much.